Adam and Jamie have been testing how Christmas tree lights can set your festive fur on fire, and they've just had a result. If you put too much into an extension cord just plugged into your house. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> All right, we got a spark. Now it's time to get a fire. Okay, well, a dry tree is going to be easier to burn. I agree, so we should dry the heck out of this tree we're going to use and wrap the heck out of it. I want five times as many Christmas lights on it as we did in the shop. Okay, and just in case that doesn't do it, we should also put in a remote ignition rig as well. And just to replicate the spark I got in the bench test. Perfect. One way or the other, we're going to burn this thing. Sound the sirens. Did someone say fire? To try to ignite a tree once and for all, Jamie and Adam have come to the City of Pleasanton Fire Center. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> Smells kind of funky in here. It works for me. We've got uh, a couple of door accesses uh, from different angles that we could be at. And, uh, I think what we're looking at here is probably the tree in, in like that corner. Hi, Captain. Hi, gentlemen. And Captain Dickey has no doubt that Christmas tree fires are frightening. Well, what do you think about what we're doing here? Have you dealt with this kind of situation before in a house fire? Yes, we go to Christmas tree fires every year. We had a house burn up in December 26th of 1997 where a child turned the lights onto the Christmas tree and the tree immediately ignited and burned up the house and caused a lot of damage. All right, well, you ready to go? I'm ready. In this last test, the guys are going for broke. They've rigged the tree with hundreds of lights plugged into dozens of sockets. Well, all I know is this is going to make some little child really happy. And to further up the fire factor, the pine is totally parched. What we have here is a kiln-dried tree. This was dried at a place that dries flowers, so it's dry as a bone. Now it's time for some tree trimming fun. We've gone way over the top with these lights. We've got 2,500 lights. It's a couple hundred amps worth of electrical power and heat going into this tree. The Mythbusters tree is starting to rival the Rockefeller Centers. 72 strands of lights, 1,800 bulbs. <laughs> I'll bet this is what Christmas is like in heaven. I'm going to turn them off. I can't even gaze upon it. So bright is the light it gives off. It's as bright as the sun, but there's something missing. That's right, tacky ornaments. A decorative garland. As if we needed this thing to be any more flammable. And some brightly colored baubles. <laughs> are these not glass? Oh, they are. With 2,500 lights, this is the ultimate test in the hot bulb makes fire theory. But in case that still doesn't work, Jamie's also added a sparker for good measure. The neon transformer takes 110, just, you know, normal line voltage and kicks it up to, I think in this case it's around five, 6,000 volts, something like that. This is a straightforward, uh, always works way of getting a fire. Doesn't the tree look lovely, children? Now, to set it on fire. This tree behind me is loaded up with 2,500 Christmas lights. We've got some garland, we've got some bulbs, and this tree has been dried out in a flower drying oven for five solid days. It is effectively a Christmas tree shaped match. So what do Jamie and Adam hope Santa will bring? We're hoping that we'll get everything to come together and make for a big fire. Do not try this test at home. Without the fire department on hand, more than the turkey will be overcooked. Okay, Linda, give us power. Over. Copy that. Pressing the green button. Over. <laughs> and there it is. It looks so cheery now. With all 2,500 lights on, the guys monitor the tree from a safe distance. Those light bulbs require more power than most people have in their house. Not just on a single circuit, in their whole house. The temperature rises rapidly, and soon the tree gets hot enough to make Jamie's whiskers bristle with anticipation. Chris, what's the temperature, the maximum? The top now is at 240. 240 on the scale, that's the highest? 240 degrees, and it's been 21 minutes. Soon, there's a hopeful sign. Yeah, it's smoking, you can see it through the windows here. Dude, we're gonna get ignition. But 40 minutes later, the bulbs still haven't gone ballistic. And if 2,500 bulbs can't heat a tree to ignition, then no amount will. Well, lots of smoke, no fire. I think we're going to set the spark off. Sounds good. You guys ready? 
We'll mask up and be prepared to go in. Okay. We're going to light this thing up with old Sparky, so stand by for our signal to cut the power. Over. Copy that, Emerald. Stand by. It's the final test in this story. Can a spark cause the fur to fire? Okay, let's try it. Ignition in three, two, one. Bingo, we have ignition. There you go. That's it. That's beautiful. So fast. The fire department springs into action. Firemen have the best toys ever. Our Christmas tree's branches aren't so lovely anymore. Well, uh... Well, I thought it was an ugly Christmas tree before. There's your problem. <laughs> oh, man. The short circuit did the job, and the boys are shocked at how fast the fire spread. That wasn't an explosion, but it was so fast that it'd be out of control. If it went up, you wouldn't be able to do anything unless you were standing right there with the fire extinguisher. Exactly. At the moment we saw the fire, you're already pretty much too late to get it under control with anything but a bunch of firemen. <laughs> <laughs> I was amazed how fast it got out of control. Right, it grows quickly and there's no other fuel in that room so it would burn itself out, but imagine if you had drapes and furniture inside, it would continue to grow rapidly. And with that kind of fire, even if you had a, um, like a standard uh, household fire extinguisher, you probably wouldn't be able to deal with it, right? No, a fire like this would grow out of control before you can even go out and get your fire extinguisher. The best thing to do is leave the house immediately. All it would take is one little spark, you know, whether it's an older set of lights, whether somebody's messed with the fuse, you can get a short, and if you do, you can set a tree on fire. This is no myth. In fact, this is more like a public service announcement, because the figures we have says that on December 24th, 25th, and 26th in the U.S., there's over 10,000 fires that cause 40 deaths and over $80 million in damage every single year from Christmas trees burning down from various reasons. I think this one is totally busted. I mean, we put 2,500 bulbs on that tree, and it was not enough to create the heat necessary to auto-ignite. I agree, it's myth busted, but you know, that doesn't mean that people should let their guards down because we did prove that it is possible to overload something like an extension cord with so many lights that you create a short and you could start a tree fire. Yeah, you know, this myth really, I, I'm amazed, woke up my holiday spirit. I think that we should do a Christmas special. It's one for the future. It is.